So this is the launch CRP919E Advanced Car Diagnostic Scanner. Now I have to admit this was kindly sent to me for review by launch themselves and it benefits with a Bluetooth module so no more thick heavy cables from the car's OBD socket to the reader and it also has over 31 functions to do those common jobs like resetting the oil service, ABS bleeding, electronic throttle reset, transmission reset, battery etc as many other functions. It also offers online coding for VW, Audi and Skoda. It's also bi-directional and it has a vehicle coverage of over 120. So if we look in the box we have a cable that connects the VCI or vehicle communication interface to the car's OBD socket. We then have a standard USB-A cable with a USB-C on the other end. Then we have the VCI itself which has indicating lights on both sides of the unit to show the power, vehicle connection and input output activity and also serves as the Bluetooth connecting interface. So this has two connections, a USB-C at one end and a 15-pin connector at the other, which connects the OBD cable for the vehicle's main connection. We then have the 5-volt power supply adapter, which comes as standard with a Type-G 240-volt UK adapter and a Type-C EU adapter and also a type A US adapter so globally there should be no problem charging this unit anywhere in the world so those are the adapters and those simply clip onto the power unit itself now we also have a plastic envelope which contains two manuals you've got a quick start guide and the full user manual and it's also worth noting that also in this envelope is a small but very important sealed envelope that has your activation code so you can register the unit correctly. So there's the main manual like so and there's the quick set guides and I'll show that little envelope also in the video and as usual there'll also be a photo of that um, towards the end of the video. So those are all the accessories basically in the box and then lastly we have the actual unit itself. So we just take that out. It's pretty well protected there with some velcro straps. So here it is. So this has a 7 inch screen and it's powered by Android 10 and also contains a 6300 milliamp hour rechargeable battery. It's also worth noting obviously that it's touch screen and I should probably also point out there is a rear camera on this unit and the main connections are a USB-C and a USB-A as you can see there. So that basically covers everything that you get in the box. Right then, so probably worth doing a little bit of reading now and try and work out how I actually use this unit. So probably what I'll do first is let's get the UK adapter on like so. So that just pushes on and twists into place. You can actually remove this as well so we just plug that in and give the unit a, a proper full charge before we do anything else so that's a USB-C connector there like so so we switch it on see what we've got so I thought it was actually flat at first but no we've got 71% battery um, health there which is pretty good now you might as well take this protective plastic screen off as well and we just power it up now for the first time so this is all new to me I've not switched this unit on before um, so I'm totally new to this and I've never used one before so we are that's charging now 
So we power up and just see what actually happens. I've sped this up a little bit just so we can get onto the home screen. So there we are. That's the home screen of the unit. And the first thing we need to do obviously is register the product and do a software update. So the way I did this was I went to settings, printer set, current Wi-Fi network and use Wi-Fi. That got me connected to Wi-Fi. I could then register as a new user and use the enclosed envelope with the code to activate the unit and then do the many updates. So now the unit's actually been fully charged and updated with all the updates. It's been registered and now it's all ready to use. So we take our VCI, the cable and the tablet and connect it to the car for the first time. So, so far the unit has pretty much impressed me. It does seem all pretty simple. So here in the Renault Laguna, the OBD socket is in the centre console. So we just plug that in. So I'm not used to the fact that we've got Bluetooth on this and we've got total freedom now to actually walk around the car with the tablet, which is quite useful. So we just plug that in. That's like a old standard VGA cable you used to get on the computer monitors back in the old days. Plug that in. It's all powered up and that's basically it. it's ready to go so we can now just take our tablet and get on with the vehicle diagnostics so as you can see we've got all the lights on there showing that everything's connected and ready to go so i'll take this round to the front of the car and hopefully try and get the camera angle just right so we don't get too much of a glare on the device Got a little bit of glare there but anyway so here's the main menu and basically I'm going to go through all the menus or as many of the menus as possible um, and basically just let you go through and see what this unit does so while the video actually plays and we go through the various menus it might be worth me actually pointing out um, for like the local diagnosis what vehicles um, the unit actually covers that was sent to me. So if I start with the American cars, we've got the Buick, Cadillac, Chevrolet, Chrysler, Dodge, Fiat, and that's Brazil, the Ford, General Motors, General Motors Brazil, and the Jeep. And if I go on to the European cars, we've got the Abarth, Alfa Romeo, Aston Martin, Audi, Bentley, BMW, Bugatti, Citroen, Dacia, Ferrari, Fiat, Ford, that's Europe, Gaz, not heard of that one, Iveco, Jaguar, Lamborghini, Lancia, Land Rover, MAN, TGE, Maserati, Maybach, Mercedes-Benz, Mini, Opel, Opel South America, Peugeot, Polestar, Porsche, Renault, Rolls-Royce, Rover, Saab, Seat, Skoda, Smart, Sprinter, Vauxhall, Vaz, Volvo, VW and VW CV. Um, you've also got Asian cars which would be the Acura, Daewoo, Dahatsu, Genesis, GTR which is Nissan, Holden, which is Australia, Honda, Hyundai, Hyundai Korea, Infinity, Azusu, Azusu Thailand, Kia, Kia of Korea, Lexus, Manhindra of India, Maruta of India, Mazda, Mitsubishi, Nissan, Piraduya, Proton, Renault, Samsung, Sangyong, Subaru, Suzuki, Tata and Toyota. Then we've got the section for Chinese cars and I'm going to actually have to admit defeat on this because a lot of these I can't actually pronounce. But needless to say there are quite a lot of cars for the Chinese. Anyway we'll go on to live data now. So I've started the engine up 
and we're going to go to the electronic control module and we're going to read the data stream and see what data we can actually watch while the engine's running and as you can see this is live data there we've got the graphs like you would have on an oscilloscope so we can see the the level over time period now if I just try and go through a few of these as you can see it's pretty comprehensive so that's just our air flow at the moment I'm just trying to demonstrate that we've obviously got extensive diagnostic um, information here at our fingertips So air temperature sensor voltage there so you can see the value 2.27 volts and this is the boost pressure so that's in millibars so you you can keep scrolling this for actually quite a while so I'm just trying to give you some sort of small demonstration as to the basic functions that us home mechanics might understand but obviously you've got the more advanced stuff that a qualified mechanic would find use but it definitely all seems to be here and when you think the price of this unit is actually under £500 um, which is obviously aimed at home mechanics like me you can see we really do have a whole wealth of information at our fingertips so it might actually be worth me quickly mentioning or reading out all the service functions that this unit does um, because obviously these are quite important so you've got the ABS bleeding the air conditioning system relearn initialization adaptive front lighting add blue reset air fuel reset air level calibration battery matching brake reset coolant bleed crank position sensor adaptive learning um, DPF regeneration that's obviously quite an important one uh, the EGR adaption electric throttle relearning engine power balance monitoring gas particulate filter regeneration gearbox relearning high voltage battery IMMO programming immobilization reset um, injector coding that's another important one intelligent cruise control system language change NOx sensor reset oil maintenance reset obviously pretty common one that seat occupancy calibration steering angle stop start reset sunroof reset tire reset TPMS reset the database transport mode and windows calibration so as you can see the unit really does cover I would have thought pretty much anything um, you'd need to do without going into the really high level stuff um, that you'd probably get from the main dealer so anyway so we're still going through the data stream here so we're nearly at the bottom of here so you can see what's covered so hopefully this video does give you um, a sort of basic introduction to this unit um, if you're considering buying one now from what I can see it definitely seems to be a pretty good unit and very easy to use so I'm quite pleased with it and obviously this would be the unit now I will use of choice and my other one will probably sold on eBay so anyways, here, here's some product information that is on the unit and as usual 
Here's some reference photographs which you can pause to view for longer.